Hey guys, this is my next tutorial. It's about learning how CSS works. CSS is cascading style sheet. In order to find out what it really means, we need to do some background uh, examples in HTML. And let's do that right now. So I already prepared um, an HTML file called start.html and I'm going to drag it into Notepad application to open it. So I'm going to open it up like this. And at the same time, I'm going to open it side by side in Google Chrome. I'm going to drag it in there. So it's a blank file intentionally. This is the minimum HTML that we need to type in order to create a basic HTML page. And this is our starting point. If you're still unsure what this HTML mumbo jumbo means, I refer you to my previous HTML tutorial that explains all of this and more in 14 minutes. So there should be a link on the screen right now. But if you already watched that and this is your next tutorial, I think you're ready to start learning CSS. Before we dive into CSS, we need to remind ourselves the nature of HTML. HTML is a markup language and that means that we're using tags inside tags to determine the structure of the web page. For example, we have HTML tag that opens and closes and in between we have a head and then the body. So it's like a tag inside a tag. And inside of it, the head tag, we have a title tag. And this one has a function of determining the title that appears here in the tab. We can refer to this idea where a tag is inside a tag as nesting. So we can say that the title tag is nested within the head tag and the head tag is nested within the HTML tag. The same goes for body. Body tag is nested also within the HTML tag. This nesting idea is incredibly important to understand if you're planning on learning how CSS works. In fact, CSS or cascading style sheet can probably even be renamed to nesting style sheets or nested style sheets because they operate on the same principle or at least very similar principle and you're going to learn about how that works in just a second. In order to demonstrate CSS I need to first add some elements and I'm going to add some things to the body tag and the first thing I'm going to create is the header h1 tag. This is my header. And also I'm going to add a couple of paragraphs of text to my web page. This is my first paragraph. And likewise I'm going to create this is my second paragraph and close the tag just as we learned from the previous tutorial. Now I'm going to save this file and refresh it in Chrome browser to see what we just did. CSS is usually used to apply styles to existing elements. For example, background color, color of the text, border colors, and all kinds of things like that to existing elements that we have. This is why I created some of these to practice on. Now in order to add CSS to a web page HTML provides us with a special tag. It's called style. This style goes into the head uh, tag like this. So let's go ahead and add it style 
and likewise we have to close it. I briefly talked about HTML tag attributes in my previous tutorial and it's not really necessary but it's probably a really good idea to do it uh, to add a attribute to the style tag called type and this attribute type will determine the type of content that goes inside this style. HTML provides a value called text forward slash CSS. So what this means is that the content that we're going to be putting here inside the style tags it will be basic text but it will be a special language CSS cascading style sheets. So this lets HTML know that within this style we will be using CSS. Now even if I remove this like this and we'll go back to the blank style tags this will still work the CSS code will work but it's again it's a really good idea to to place it there it's just more accurate and pro proper okay I think we're ready to start creating our first style sheet and in order to explain how it works um, I mentioned nesting ability of HTML tags not without a reason because CSS has a lot to do with that you can almost call it nesting style sheets because whatever style you apply to let's say body tag this style will be applied to all of the elements inside of that tag but not outside if you apply CSS style only to H1 for example then only H1 will be affected but if you apply a style to body all of the three H1, P and this P will be affected so this is the cascading nature of CSS that's basically what it means and another thing all of the CSS styles applied to the body will be applied not only to H1, P and P tag right here but also any tag that's found within these tags so it can go on forever if you have a hundred tags inside this tag for some reason then all of the CSS styles will be still applied to those tags just because they're within the body you might find one thing of interest here that the body tag is often referred to as the parent in other words this is the parent of these tags because these tags are located within it and believe it or not these elements here are actually referred to as children of the body tag which is the parent and the same goes for all of the other tags in HTML for example title and style tags are children of the head tag the body which is the parent of these three tags is actually also a child of the HTML tag which is the parent of them all in order to demonstrate how this actually works we have to choose the HTML element that we want to apply some style to let's start with H1 tag in order to type our first CSS code between these tags we're going to identify the tag by its name and in order to do that all we have to do is actually type the name of that tag in this case it's h1 and that's what we're going to do type h1 and in order to determine the style for this tag we're going to open some brackets open and close and so within here where the blinking cursor is 
we're actually going to t um, type some styles. Now the commands you're going to type within these brackets are going to be CSS commands. They will not be HTML commands. So it's almost like really having one sub language within this entire HTML document. Even though the entire document is HTML, within these brackets, within here, for each element, we can define multiple ones, and you will see how to do that in just a second. But it's, it's a separate language within a language. And so for that reason, the commands we're going to type in here that will define the style of any of these elements will be CSS commands. What this also means is that within these brackets, HTML is not going to work. Within these brackets, we have to use strictly CSS code. And this is where it gets a little more complicated because from this point on, not only you're studying HTML, but you also need to study CSS commands. But thankfully, this tutorial makes it a little simple. And we're going to use a CSS command called color. All you have to do is just type it in. And to determine its value, you see how the style has a type equal sign and then the value. Well, CSS has slightly different rules. So you type in the name, which is color, and then instead of an equal sign, you're going to type uh, colon. And after that, that's basically our equal sign. And after that, we're going to type a value, for example, red. Usually, a CSS command ends with a semicolon. It's not necessary, but it's a good idea to put it there, just to be accurate. And it can also separate. This semicolon can separate multiple values. You can apply multiple values to the same element. But we have just applied color red to H1 element using CSS. So let's go ahead and save this and refresh this in the browser and see what happens. As you can see, the header turned red. And this is done by this command, color red. It's very intuitive. We specified color. We typed the, the word red. And it turned the H1 tag red in red color. And just like you would imagine, if you change the color here to, let's say, blue, let's save it and refresh it, obviously the header will change to blue. If you change it to brown, save it, refresh, as you can see, the header is brown now. We can um, add, uh, replace this with color green, refresh, green, and so on. So you get the idea. HTML and CSS define few colors like that. Uh, they are predefined. You cannot change the shade of green. Green is always a shade of green. So there's not much uh, room for uh, creative expression here if we're limited to the only shade of green. It's actually possible to have more control over the shades of these colors uh, with these um, uh, with CSS code, but that's outside of the scope of this tutorial at this point. Here's one thing about CSS. As we uh, discussed, it's a cascading style sheet, and if you apply a style to body, it will affect all of the styles for all of the elements, no matter what they are. Let's demonstrate that. Let's rename H1 to body. So now, Everything that's defined in this brackets right here, color red, now it doesn't refer to H1, but it refers to body. And as you will see, let's save this and refresh. Now, by only changing to body from H1, now we're coloring the entire body tag, regardless of which tags are inside. As you can imagine, this gives us really good flexibility about what we can color 
or change a, some kind of a different style. Color is not the only, obviously, uh, thing that we can change using CSS. There are so many different values and parameters here that um, you should probably learn about if you're starting to get the way CSS works. From this example, you should probably continue learning all of these different combinations of value and uh, parameters and values. Color is not the only one. In order to briefly demonstrate that, let's add a second style. Background. Let's set it to black. I'm going to save this and let's see what happens. As you can see, the entire site turned black. So in the end, what is this cascading all about? Well, if we open definition of the word cascade on Google, it will tell us pour downward rapidly and in large quantities. Water was cascading down the stairs. So how does that help us within the context of HTML and CSS? Well, imagine that this nesting structure of HTML is like a stair case with all these tags inside of is an individual step. And what you're doing with CSS, this is almost like a bucket of red water. And you're pouring it over this tag and everything becomes red because the water is red. Or whatever style you specified here could have been blue. So now that you have poured your bucket of red water over your entire site, and it colored everything red. And the background was colored black. Now you can pour another bucket on some other elements. And what you would do, you would create another bucket by adding this next CSS style. This is, we are preparing our next bucket. We're going to use p tag because it will refer to these p tags in question here. And we're going to open and close the tags just like before. And this bucket of water that we're going to pour is going to be color white. So this is going to be white water. Let's save that. Refresh. And as you can see, we poured the red water over the body. Everything became red. Now we took this uh, P and colored P tags white. This is our second bucket. And the result is this. So basically what you're doing is you're pouring down buckets of different water with different styles over your nested elements. And it really makes a lot of sense because all HTML elements are nested within one another. So it really is like a stair. And you're pouring water on top of the body. Everything gets colored. And then the next bucket, only the P tags. And you keep pouring water on your elements. And as this water of style trickles down in the next, next step, you uh, get the result that you want. The example here, this is not the only way to change different styles for different elements. And there are many more values here and properties. So, but that would be a subject of a more advanced CSS tutorial, which I'm going to post after this one. In this tutorial, we basically recognized CSS as this cascading style that gets applied into the body and some other tags and it's controlled by these commands that match the name of each tag that you want to color. At this point it's all really basically CSS and as you continue to learn, you will see that there's so many more 
flexible ways of choosing all of these different elements. So this is not the only way. I think at this point this tutorial is considered completed and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.